OK, uh, it's not a specific question here, but you may well get in the exam, just like you did with the, the mocks, um, a picture of part of a river. And you may be asked to explain why it's in the upper, the middle or the lower part or decide where it is or um, be asked to identify a feature. Um, so I thought it was worth just doing a quick video, having a look at the, the three uh, parts of it. So if I label this now, you've got here is the upper here is the middle and here's the lower and basically what you're doing is my top tip here as you can see is to look at the key features look at things which identify whether it's the the upper the middle or the lower course of the river so we'll start on the upper there's a couple of things that you should really be looking for. So uh, we've got a really clear V-shaped valley. It makes a V-shape. And you can see, just like when we went to Carding Mill Valley, you've got these interlocking spurs. So I'll just make a little note there. And that's basically because at the top part of the river, and the upper part of the river, um, the river's not got much energy. And so therefore, if it... If it um, actually tries to go past any hard rock um, then actually it can't erode through those and it kind of has to go around and it creates these spurs and this is the kind of v-shape that you can see here other things that we can see clearly i've already mentioned the v-shape valley the um, rocks in the river tend to be very large and very angular They've not been eroded away yet, again, because the river hasn't got much energy. You can see also compared to the middle and the lower course, this river is actually quite narrow and it's not very deep at all. So those are the key features you're looking at. Interlocking spurs and a V-shaped valley. You're looking at the bed load, the rocks. Um, being quite angular and quite large because they haven't been had time to be eroded yet and also the fact that the river isn't very wide and it isn't very deep if we go on to the middle part of the river now you can see that we've got a few key features it's already labeled on this one um, you've got a much more gentle valley but you can see there still are some upland areas, some kind of small hills in the background. Um, and that's because it is the middle part. It's coming from the mountainous region before it gets to the kind of flat lowland. Uh, it's got this floodplain on it. And um, the floodplain is the area. And if I put that in red, so it's really clear, it's this sort of area. And that's the area that gets flooded. Um, and that's what's called a floodplain. It's kind of a flatter area by river. You can see on the upper course, you don't have that. It's just that characteristic v-shape whereas in the middle course of course you tend to see the middle you can also see that there's certain signs of meanders so I'll do that in a different color again you've got a bend here it's not a big meander it's not a big bend but it's certainly starting to bend and the river has got clearly wider and a bit deeper um, so it's kind of opening out by the time we get to the lower course that you can see on the, the bottom right here um, we've got really clear that meander that was kind of a small bend in the middle is really at this point I'll label that on um, sort of really bendy it's kind of it's really what we call elongated at that point um, you can also see it's very flat and the river is a lot wider and a lot deeper so if you're asked about these you really look for the key features and have a look at uh, the size of the river if it's very small and it's not very deep it's likely to be the upper and then look around the surrounding areas if it's very very mountainous it's likely to be the upper if there are some hills with some flatland by the side the floodplain it's likely to be the middle and if it's very flat with very few signs of any mountains it's going to be the lower